completely different subject, the subject of mathematics. And the question is from Mary Smith. Yes, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Having taught maths for all of my professional career, <clears throat> I just hope that I've managed to make many boys and girls love mathematics as much as I do. Um, therefore, it really annoys me when people with a considerable amount of pride say, I hate maths or I was never any good at it. And I just wondered whether the panel had any ideas on how we could change that attitude. All right, quick answer from Nalini, because you've given us a fair bit on maths now. But I'm, I am interested to know how you actually encourage people, you know, a bit like me, um, maybe some others who think mathematics is sort of beyond them. Well, I point out that this is a myth, that if they like music, they like singing, they like rhythm, they're already doing mathematics, because it's the patterns of rhythm are just the patterns you see in, you know, numbers and fractions and mathematics. But I, I think actually that in... Uh, in more recent times, I've come to the to the view that we should be engaging kids in more uh, physical, spatial, and other ways. Um, for example, I've been uh, very much taken up by the idea of transformational play as an educational tool. You know, everybody is using video games nowadays. My children certainly do. Um, and the video game as a mechanism for delivering information is absolutely amazing. Um, if, if, you, if you go into this, this world where you've got a certain avatar that you can choose for yourself and you can change the environment that you are walking around in and you're asked to carry, say, a sphere of ice and then as you're walking through the landscape, the ice will melt and you have to capture a certain minimum amount at the other end. Then you have to know something about the volume of ice, something about how long it takes you to get there, what volume of liquid will remain, and you're actually doing mathematics along the way. But doing it in that way is so powerful that I feel we should all be thinking about these different ways of engaging kids that gives them the power to learn. Let's ask Brian, um, The Wonders of Mathematics, a documentary well, series. Well, I, I was going to say, it does, it, there's, a, there's a deeper issue perhaps that reveals in, in our cultures. It's the same, I think, in the UK and in Australia, which is that it's, it's acceptable for, for, let's say, a politician, someone in power to say, well, of course, I don't understand that science, that mathematics stuff. And that, that's the thing that's wrong. It, it should be as unacceptable as, as, a, as a politician saying, well, I don't like books. Maybe they do, <laughs> but you know, maybe they get away with it. We don't, I don't, I don't, I've never read a novel, I've never listened to anything, I don't like that classical music stuff. You know, th th that's not acceptable. And I think it's a historical throwback, in a sense, to the days when, when being really cultured was, was about knowing about the arts, which is very valuable. But, but you didn't have to know about the foundation of our modern civilization, which is mathematics and science. And I think what we need to do is we need a cultural shift, I hope, where it's just not acceptable. We, we need to be educated across the board. That's not to denigrate the arts, it's to try and bring science up in the cultural language, as it were, and mathematics. Now, you two are both musical, um, so I'm going to ask how good you were at mathematics and whether you sort of got it. Miranda, you first. My maths teacher just gave up on me. <laughs> so did mine and he was my dad. Oh. <laughs> You got me through to a certain level and then yeah. you advised me to leave off. Yeah, so did my parents. They just went, oh, <laughs> you go to a tutor. But listen um, to this. Do you, you think you've missed out on something? Because I certainly do. I think I missed out on something great. I think um, my – because I, I don't read music. I listen to it by ear. So to understand it through that way, through – through um, the rhythm of maths and and the and looking beyond the symbols, I think uh, I would have a greater understanding of so many other things. I think it's and never too late. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, is it, it's never too late. Apparently. So, um, how about for you? I mean, you are musical. Um, yeah. So apparently, it's innate in you somehow, mathematics. Mm. See, I never, I never like thought of. Uh, like timing and stuff like that when rapping, I never thought of that as being mathematical. I always, always think about like algebra and what does X equal and all that. <laughs> and I was terrible at maths. Like I just, just I don't know. There was something about it that I just couldn't compute. Do you think it's just because you weren't inspired by somebody? I think, I think so. Yeah, I think I just didn't have an interest in it as a child. You know. Let's let's actually uh, find out from Richard whether as a 
musician yourself, as a composer, as I think about as a conductor, uh, mathematics is obviously um, all through classical music, Bach, Beethoven, deeply mathematical. Um, are you? No. But, <laughs> no, but I want to I wanna, I wanna ask the question because I think it's a really good question. What you see in Nalini is an example of a good teacher. And if I were in Nalini's maths class, I'd be in love with maths. And I reckon if I were in your maths class, I'd be in love with maths. Mm. And if you've got a teacher who is on top of the subject, who can inspire the kids, they can teach them anything. And mm. I watch, when I was teaching music and demonstrating, like them teaching music, I used to work with a, a kindergarten class and they had this fantastic kindergarten teacher and she would come in and she'd say, everybody... And the kiddie kids would go, ah, we're going to do add-ups. And the kids go, ah. they were on fire with addition, you know. So it's a, what you see here is a great math teacher. Mm. And if you've got a great teacher, you've got to get kids who love the subject. Someone who's passionate. Yeah. I'm, going to say, I'm going to say too, because I've realised what I've said about my father. Um, he was a great math teacher. <laughs> He it's just got stuck it. with me. I tell you, there are also people who have difficulties in learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs>